crispy. Hey, what's good, viewer? Today I've got something a little bit different. I don't do NECA reviews very much. I do like NECA figures. I just don't buy them uh, because they seem to have a lot of, what would you call it? I don't know, cult classic kind of toys where, you know, you either like the figure or you like the series or you don't. But I really do love NECA overall because of the fact they do cult classic type stuff like Godzilla. And I've been waiting for this 1954 version for a long time because I'm a, not a big Godzilla fan. I do like the lore. I do think Godzilla is pretty cool. And I kind of just really wanted an OG Godzilla. I mean, this is 1954, so that's when the first movie came out. If memory serves correct, I hope it is, because the whole reason why I wanted it, because this is supposed to be based off of the very first design of Godzilla, or the very first design that appeared in the movie of Godzilla, back in 1954. Then we get a big picture of him on the back here. He looks really silly, but you know, keep in mind, he was made in 1954, and it was a guy like in the suit, doing all kinds of fun, cool stuff. Anyways, let's open it up. Here's Godzilla out of package. He's got a nice black and white design because, of course, in 1954, everything was black and white. I don't know if they'll actually release a color version. I don't know if I would even care for a colored version. This is just a little bit more classic and hits home a little bit more. But you can see shading throughout the paint here. We have a darker gray, almost black. And then we get the lighter shades. Let's get my light a little bit better on that. As you can see it there on his neck a lot and throughout his body. Uh, and you look at his spikes here, those look like they're really, really well done. Let's get a look at his head. I like the way his teeth were sculpted and his eyes were sculpted very, very well. Everything is sculpted fantastically. I love his look. It's very accurate to the actual movie and all that stuff. Other side is very similar. That's not a very good shot. Let me zoom out. And get a look at his toes here. Nice looking feet. Maybe I can zoom in on it for you. There you go. And I really love the sculpt throughout. You can see the lines in his body. Very accurate to the show. Again, just, I mean, they sculpted everything. This is all sculpted, and it all feels really, really nice, and all looks really, really nice. Even on the arms, even on the hands, it's sculpted on the face. It has little different types of sculpts there, and on the head, these little mini, I guess, what do you call them? Like his spine. His spine is all these little, what do you call these? Like fins. I'm going to call them fins. There you go. They're all sculpted really nice, all the way down to his tail here. His tail came separately it wouldn't all fit in the package all you to do is just attach to the ball joint look in the bottom here a little bit of a paint mishap here on his toe where it's not all gray you can see the paint on the bottom showing out but that's really the only paint mistake i'm kind of seeing which is okay it's acceptable um you can even see his tongue in there try to get a good look see that tongue yeah so that's pretty cool I really like it when uh, these toy companies go through all the time to sculpt every little detail into their toys. You can tell they really care about it and everything. You know, Marvel Legends, big complaint is that sometimes they leave out little details, but you're not seeing that here. Every detail has been sculpted and taken care of. So let's get into articulation. This head can go down that much. You can look back this far. Of course, his mouth opens, his eyes don't move or anything. Oh, he's even got little ears. I didn't even notice that. I don't know why. Anyways, his arms will do the 360. Will his head do the 360? Yeah, his head will do the exorcist. He's got a single jointed elbow here. Just like that. Pretty good range of motion out of it, though. I mean, he can touch his chest even though it's single jointed. And he's even got a joint in his hand here. Or a little hinge, and then he's got a swivel on the wrist, and it can it can move up and down just a little bit, but not too much. Well, actually, well, there you go. I got it. It moves pretty good. See that? So he's got a little bit of, I think it's probably a ball joint on his wrist, is what I'm guessing. It's usually what they do. And then he's got a, I guess we'll call this a diaphragm joint. A little bit of a ab crunch here. It kind of just slides up and down there. That's really, really nice. Good range of motion out of that. Legs will go around 
360, well, they'll almost go around 360. You don't really need them to, so it's not a big deal. There is a single joint here at the knee, but you don't get much range of motion out of that at all. It's kind of blocked by the knee here. And, uh, yeah, so you're not, it's really not any articulation at all out of that. Much of, not much of anything. And then the feet have a swivel, and they kind of go up and down just a tad bit. Not much out of that either. So it is kind of unfortunate that you can't really move the legs at all. They're kind of a static pose. But uh, I think it probably helps with its... Uh, its stability, the fact that it can't move around. So, but you can kind of have him do that and stuff. So he does get good range of motion in his hips, but below the hips, not much going on. His tail, his tail does have articulation. Doesn't do much. Every little part swivels. Not a big deal. I mean, if you swivel it, of course, it discontinues the spikes on his back or the fins on his back, so it doesn't quite look right. But uh, there's nothing they could do about that anyways. But again, a little bit of articulation, not much. At least it doesn't fall apart. Like a, my best example of that would be like a D-Arts uh, Mewtwo tail or D-Arts Charizard tail where it just falls apart every time you touch it. And then we get a little bit more range of motion here. And you can kind of tilt it and then it'll, it'll pop off eventually, but it doesn't pop off easily or anything. You really, you really got to push its limits there and it stays on really really well uh, none of this is articulated it's all just one solid piece of plastic so overall this is a pretty cool figure I'm really enjoying it my first impressions of it are good I am glad that I chose this as my first Godzilla toy because it looks really really good and the articulation is good and everything NECA did a great job in trying to get a fuzzball off here so I would recommend it. Check it out. I'm sure you can find these at uh, Toys R Us. Although I've been going to Toys R Us and it's hard as heck for me to find anything NECA there anymore. I've, my Toys R Us is kind of just phasing out of all the adult toys. So maybe check out your local comic store or wherever you usually get NECA toys. I got mine from Big Bad Toy Store and that's where I would recommend getting it from. Uh, if you include shipping, I think I only paid about maybe 22 bucks, maybe $21. So it's, I think that's about what Toys R Us would be selling it for, to be honest. It's actually, they, they discounted the price on Big Bad Toy Store, so check it out in link description below. I guarantee you it's, I got it pretty cheap, pretty cheap there. I got it for cheap enough where I went there instead of like Toys R Us. So that's my recommendation of where to get it because it's a great toy. Other than that, guys, thanks for watching. Until next time, peace.